All right, some of you may have heard that there's this uh, controversy happening in cosmology, that there, there's some tension in the air about exactly how fast the universe is expanding today. There's a certain number, it's around 70 kilometers per megaparsec. That means a megaparsec is 1 million parsec is about 4 million light years. That means for every 1 million parsec in distance you go, the universe is expanding at 70 kilometers per second. So you go out 1 megaparsec, you're, you're going to see an expansion rate of, of 70 kilometers per second. You go out 2 megaparsec, you're going to see 140. You go out 3, you're going to see 210, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's the definition of that number. It's called the Hubble rate or Hubble constant. And you may have heard that there's you know, there's different cosmological measurements of this number and they're starting to disagree. And this disagreement is starting to solidify over the past couple of years. And we're trying to figure out what's going on. So in order to calculate this number, there, there's a, or, or find this number, there's a few different ways to do it. Our, the expansion of our universe is understood through general relativity. General relativity is our theory of gravity. General relativity connects matter and energy to space and time, right? The, 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 to the geometry of space time. That, that's exactly what relativity is. This is exactly our understanding of gravity. This setup applies to our solar system. It applies to black holes, merging neutron stars, galaxies, and applies to the whole entire universe. Why? Because our whole entire universe is full of matter and energy. And it's moving, it's expanding, duh. So, so there it is, general relativity. So the expansion rate of the universe today is given by what the universe is made of. You change the ingredients, you're going to get a different expansion rate. So depending on how much dark matter is there is, how much dark energy, how much normal matter, like et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that will change the expansion rate. And these two quantity or these two things, the expansion rate and the stuff, are connected through the equations of general relativity, boiled down in the specific case of our universe to something called the Friedman equation. And this Friedman equation is, is the glue. It tells us, okay, for this amount and kind of stuff, here's the expansion rate. And it can also go the other way. Like if you have a certain expansion rate, then you can understand what the universe is made of. You can, you can go back and forth all you want. So when we're trying to get this number, expansion rate today, you can either just measure it directly using some technique, which I'll get into, or you can go a roundabout way. You can figure out what the universe is made of, plug it into the Friedman equation, and predict an expansion rate. And this is where the tension happens. Because we do have measurements today of, of the expansion rate in the universe around us, like a contemporary modern day 21st century expansion rate. We get it from supernova, type 1a supernova, using their distance from us, using their speed that they're receiving. We just measure it. We just measure the expansion rate. There's a downside to this technique. There aren't too many supernova the data are a little bit messy, you know, supernova aren't exactly like pristine. So there's some uncertainty. You have to do a lot of work to clean up that data. I mean, it's still reliable, but you got to do a lot of work to, to get a number out, but it's a raw observational number, but you know, it's a kind of a fuzzy one. And, and there's some, there's some assumptions and some biases that go into your analysis, you know, to get that number. The other way we can do it, is through the cosmic microwave background, the leftover light from the early universe, from the Big Bang, uh, emitted when our universe was just 380,000 years old. We have like exquisite observations, super duper high quality, like, oh, delicious observations in the cosmic microwave background. Like nobody questions how good that data are. But that doesn't give us an expansion rate today. It's light that's 13.8 billion years old. Instead, it tells us more about what the universe was made of back then. And, and, and from there, we can work out what the universe is made today, made of today. We can plug the ingredients into the Friedman equation. We can run that recipe and out pops a prediction or a number for what the expansion rate is today. 
the Hubble constant is today. And this number that we get from the cosmic microwave background disagrees with the number we get from the supernova today. So what do we do? One camp suggests that maybe the supernova data aren't that great. Maybe there's a mistake in the analysis. Maybe there's some sort of flaw and maybe all you guys are stupid. I don't know. Not my words, theirs. Fair, fair, but no one's going to budge on that issue. The other side of the coin is, well, maybe the cosmic microwave background data is wrong. You know, maybe, you know, you've run the Planck mission. Maybe you, you know, you didn't screw a bolt in tight. You didn't, you know, check for rounding errors or something. And, and some error creeped in and then you're just predicting a wrong number. No one's going to budge on that either. Maybe they're both wrong. Definitely no one's budging on that. So a likely culprit is that the model is wrong. The glue is wrong. That the connection between what we're learning about in the early universe and what we're measuring in the late universe, that glue, the Friedman equation that allows us to move back and forth, maybe there's a flaw in there. Maybe we don't understand the universe. Fair enough. That's happened before. It could be, it could be any number of things. Most likely culprit in this scenario is that we don't fully understand dark energy. Maybe dark energy changes. Maybe it evolves with time. We honestly don't know. We don't have enough data yet to, to, to make that call. When it comes to this tension in measuring the, the Hubble rate, the expansion rate of the universe today, it could be that the supernova are wrong. It could be that the cosmic microwave background data are wrong. It could be that both are wrong. Or it could be that the glue, the model, the theory, our understanding of the ingredients of the universe is wrong. We honestly, at this stage, we just don't know, but it's this is why it's so, so exciting within the cosmological community and as astronomical, whatever community, communities in general are excited by it. Car insurance conferences are abuzz with talks about what this could imply. I mean, the whole deal. It's because, it, you know, assuming the data are good and Man, those observers will, will die on those hills, that's for sure. There's something new in the universe to learn. Potentially. Potentially. Give it a few more years. My bet, my bet is always that eventually with more data, uh, the, the two results will slowly get closer together and they'll disappear. But that's the boring option, which is usually the case 99% of the time. But hey, 1% of the time something interesting has happened. And we learn something about the universe. Let's find out. I'll do a recap in a few years and we'll see where we are. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And please, please go to patreon.com slash PM Sutter. It really is your contributions that keeps this show going. And I, right here, that's how much I mean it. My appreciation. I'll see you next week.